What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech once again, and due to high GPU prices, you might want to start looking at other options for mining. Today, we're going to talk about Burst Coin and how to go ahead and get a drive plotted. We'll talk about the actual mining process in the video after this one. So, if you're interested in that, please hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comment section below what you're doing to go ahead and mine. But for now, let's get into the easiest way to plot and then a couple of alternate options for plotting if you want to adjust the settings differently. So let's get into it. Okay, so the most user-friendly one I've found so far is burstwallet.io and it's the DA Wallet's Burst client for Windows All-in-One. This will include a miner as well as the plotter and the wallet. So to get that, just follow the link in the description, scroll down to the current release and pick up the download Burst Coin AIO setup. And then when you're ready, run the executable that it downloads and install the wallet. It will open the wallet, but when it opens the wallet, if you have a firewall, the initial launch will not actually allow you to say click or allow through my fire firewall so go ahead and close the wallet down and then reopen it at that point you should be presented with the option for local and online wallet it tries to default you into online wallet so click over to local wallet if you get an error for java make sure you install java now it after you install Java, just go ahead and close down the wallet and reopen it. That error will appear again and can last for 10 minutes or longer while the local wallet actually loads. So just give it some time. If you do continue to have issues, you can go into one more step to clear it up by clicking help and then clean up database and then click clean database and yes, and then click close. Once that's done, you can just create your passphrase. So once you've generated your passphrase, just go ahead and copy this down on a physical piece of paper and keep it in a physical safe somewhere. Of course, for now, I'm just gonna copy it and put it on a notepad here locally on my system. This is not best practice. Please do not do this. Uh, just for now I have, this is a throwaway wallet and an example for you guys so once you've gotten in it'll say welcome to your new burst account your account ID is and this will be your burst wallet address now the next thing that you are going to want to do is actually come up here to faucets and pick one of these the burstpay.net is great and you can actually just copy your burst address put it in here and click send address after verifying you're not a robot and then it will send you one burst coin you'll need this for mining later on so this is just a heads up for that okie dokie so back to the wallet and back to talking about plotting there's two ways to plot the easiest way to plot is to click the right plots button down here and then select the drive that you want to plot. I have named one example here that we can do an example for, and then we can click plot this drive. And at this point, it will give you a screen that says plotter, and you can assign the amount of space you want to take up on the drive, as well as the amount of threads from your processor that you want to go ahead and use. To make this faster, make sure you do run as admin, and then over here, you can just copy your burst address and paste it into the burst account. There are a couple options that you don't get here, including specifying the amount of memory you want to use while plotting. So if you want to be a little bit more granular and get into the details, you can come over to your file explorer and then in the address bar, do the percentage app data and then percentage sign again and then come over here under the burst wallet and then open up the x plotter and under x plotter there's a batch file here and you can right click and edit this batch file upon which you can then edit this line right here so let's go over the settings for you real quick the id is actually going to be a different form of the burst address so to get that maximize your burst client and then click copy numeric account ID and then paste that into this batch file right here 
And then for the SN number, this is the nonces at which you wish the plot to start at. Now every drive that you plot or every plot needs to make sure that it's a different nonce than another plot you've done. So if you're adding other drives, keep track of this so that you can sequentially go up or just use astronomically high numbers that you're pretty positive you haven't used before. At least that's what I've read online as some people's strategies. The next number, the dash N, is the number of nonces you want to plot in this file. So to find this actually, what we're gonna do is go into our disk properties. And you can do that by just finding the disk that you are trying to plot and click the properties button after you right click it. And you'll see the capacity right here. To calculate it, you'll open up your calculator, type in this number of bytes right here. So 499971227968, and then you will divide it by bytes. So every nonce is 256 kilobytes, which is we are going to divide it by the bytes and I'll put this in the description below, which is 2,600 and uh, wait, 262,144 bytes and click equal. This number rounded down. So 1907, 238 will be the number that comes after the N here. So it'll be 1907, 238 for this drive. Dash T denotes the amount of threads. So to find the amount of threads in your current system, you can right click your Windows Start button and click Task Manager and then click Performance. On the right side, you'll see the amount of logical processors. So Xplotter does support hyperthreading. So you wanna use the full 12 threads here in this case. The path will be the path to the drive. So you just want to make sure in this example, we're using D. So we will change the drive letter to D and we'll just leave it as plots. The memory will be the amount of memory that you want to allocate the initial write to go to. This should never be more than 80% of the total system memory. So keep that in mind. On the same performance screen under task manager, you can highlight memory and right next to it, it should tell you the total amount of memory in your system. So for this example, it's 32. So to figure out and calculate 80% of that, we can just do 32 times 0.8 and we get 25.6. So we would put 25 here. There are some theories here that you could do smaller amounts of memory and do uh, and multiply up. Um, that's going to be something that we'll get into more detail as we get into plotting more difficult drives like SMR drives, etc. So at this point, you'll click File and Save. So after that, you'll be able to just right click the batch file that you've saved and click Run as Administrator. But the easiest way to go ahead and complete this as optimized as possible is just going to be coming back in and running the plotter directly from the Burst Client Wallet, selecting the 12 cores, putting in your Burst account and clicking Start Plotting. At this point, it'll start plotting, and as you can see here, it actually decided to go ahead and use uh, only 6,000 megabytes of the 24,000 megabytes of free space for memory that we actually have. And we are probably not optimized fully. So that's why I showed you guys the more, I guess, in-depth way of doing it. From here, this number right here will show you the nonces a minute. So we're at, with this 6800K, we're at 17,000 nonces a minute. And what this will do is it's actually writing to the memory right now. And if we go back into our task manager, let me see if we can do that. So in task manager, you can see here that we're using 100% CPU and 39% of the memory. All right, so some quick disk optimizations that you can make to speed up plots. You can right click and your start button and click device manager. Under device manager, you want to go ahead and pull out all of the disk drives, find the disk drive that you are going ahead and plotting, and then right click it and click properties. You wanna go over to policies and make sure that write caching is enabled. For the USB 3.0 devices like you see here, 
you need to make sure that you click better performance first and then check enable write caching on the device. And this is for any external drive, you're gonna have to do this every time. And keep in mind that you'll want to actually eject the drive before you do it. Alrighty, so that covers the basics of plotting so far. And I will say that I do have an SMR drive back here and it's gonna take a while even with Threadripper. And to give you guys an idea, Threadripper 1950X is doing about 40,000 nonces a minute, which is pretty badass. So if you guys are looking for the ultimate plotting device, that's probably going to be it right now as far as price to performance. Keep in mind, you can speed up plotting by doing GPU plotting, but there are some issues there with stability uh, as far as I've read. And I'll have to do some more uh, experimenting with it and research on it before I can really speak to it too much. But keeping in mind that like if you got an RX 580, for example, I think it was the 580 you're probably only around 30 notches. So the Threadripper is still gonna beat it. And CPU plotting optimizes straight out of the box. So you aren't gonna have to go back through after you've plotted and optimize. But that's all in other videos that we're going to have to cover. I do just like to mention it all because I do realize you guys probably have those questions. And we're gonna try to put together all of that. But if you wanna get started, this video should have helped you get started. And if it didn't, let me know what other questions you have in the description below. But we covered the wallet. We covered getting your first burst coin for setting up later for mining to burst coin pools. And we covered plotting your first drive. Now, if you're plotting really large drives as well, some of the strategies people use is going ahead and plotting to like a faster drive that's smaller and then taking those plots and copying them over to the larger drive. That's something we'll also have to cover later as well. Hope we touched on all of the subjects there. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you next Tuesday.